Hello there everyone, this is UXW Bill. It's kind of a cold, wet, rainy, disagreeable sort of a day outside, and it's late enough in the day now that I'm getting close to the point where I'd be running out of daylight anyway, so what better time than now to make yet another UXW Bill product review video? This particular review video is sponsored by Top Test Tools. However, as with all of my review videos, I review products only on the condition that I am allowed to be completely honest with regard to reporting my findings. So I will definitely tell you what is good about this product, what's bad about this product, if anything, and maybe what could stand to be improved should there be anything along those lines. So let's see what the nice folks at Top Test Tools sent me. Came in a nondescript brown package like this. I'm sure someone's already getting ready to make a rude joke about that of some kind. They actually sent me two of these things. Their explanation was that I could share one with a friend or family member so as to improve their safety. These are combustible gas leak detectors, model number PT-210. Before I go ahead and open the box to start the rest of this review, I'd like to ask a favor. Please watch the whole video before you leave a comment. That said, let's go ahead and get started. I'll pick the box that actually sustained a little bit of shipping damage. This is, as far as I can tell, purely cosmetic. The tool within does not appear to have suffered any damage at all. The box opens very easily. There's a little user's manual tucked in up top here. And as its position in the box would suggest, I would definitely recommend, especially if you're new to using a tool such as this, that you take the time to read through the book. It's also vitally important when you're working with a gas leak detector that you activate the tool and allow it to warm up in an area that you reasonably believe is free of the potentially explosive gas that you're looking for. Now the nice folks at Top Test Tools tell us that this is good for finding natural gas, propane, butane, even sewer gas. Now we'll try some of those gases a little bit later in the video and see how we do. I don't know that I'll get around to sewer gas though because I'm not sure I can actually find any sewer gas. I don't know if it would suffice to get near a sewer grate and see if anything registers there. But go ahead and read the book if you decide to buy one of these. There'll be links down in the video description. The tool itself is up next. I believe these are actually available in multiple colors. They sent me an orange one, which is just fine because I like the color orange perfectly well. There's just a few other things inside the box. There's a little insert. You could actually store the tool in here if you wanted to. But Top Test also gives you a very nice little carrying pouch with their brand name on it there at the bottom that you could also use to store the tool in. At the time this video went into production, I had asked of the folks at Top Test Tools if, if they had any data about the sensor lifetime on this particular gas leak detector. They have not gotten back to me yet, so I will have to post that information down in the video description. At the front end of the tool is the gas leak detector. In the middle of the tool, there is a display screen that shows the approximate level of detected explosive gas. You also get a power switch that's red in color and buttons for high and low sensitivity. At the bottom of the tool is a battery door that can simply be unscrewed. And the batteries are actually included. And what's more, they're name brand batteries. Some of you may or may not like Duracells. They've always been okay to me, but I do know they have something of a tendency to leak if you forget about them, but that's something you shouldn't do. If you're not going to use a tool for a long period of time, definitely take the batteries out of it so that the next time you do want to use it, it will be usable without having to go and buy another one or engage in a great deal of rigmarole to get the battery contacts cleaned up such that it would work again. So we'll go ahead and crack these batteries out of the package here. Sometimes you can even do this really easily. Of course, since I'm trying to do it on camera, it probably won't work at all well. Put the batteries in the tool. They drop in fairly nicely. Then you screw the end cap back on. 
and we'll see if I actually inserted them correctly when we turn the tool on. The sensor will begin to warm up as the tool prepares itself to be used. We'll get to that here shortly. Another thing that I'm going to do in this video, mainly just for fun, and yes, I shared with the folks at Top Test that I wanted to do this. As it happens, I own some other combustible gas leak detectors. Here's a Klein Tools ET120, and I also have a much higher end Inficon gas mate that, as you can see, I really haven't used very much. I want to put the Top Test Tools product up for comparison against both of these other competing brands and see how it compares. Well, now that the sensor of the tool has warmed up, we should be ready to go off in search of gas leaks, so let's see if maybe we can find one. Here are all three gas detectors powered on and running, ready for their first test. For this first test, the gas that we will be seeking to find is actually butane that I will release from this Weller Portisol brand butane powered soldering iron. I've tried to put all the sensor heads in approximately the same place so that all three gas leak detectors would have as equal of an opportunity as possible to detect the gas when it is emitted from the soldering iron. I've also placed them all on their low sensitivity range. We'll make this test again with the high sensitivity range as well. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the gas. You might be able to hear that. And we'll set it down nearby. Inficon and Top Test definitely got it. And they were amongst the fastest. Now the Klein Tools is in on the game as well. So it definitely passed that test. We'll turn the flow of gas off and see how long it is before each of them clear. It looks as though perhaps the Inficon already has. The Top Test and Klein are still very, very upset. As you can see, the display on the Top Test, it actually turns color from green to red to give you a further concrete indication that a gas leak has definitely been detected and you should immediately take a corrective action. So the Klein Tools is winding down. The Top Test just turned its display back to green. Let's go ahead and bump the seventh sensitivity back up to its highest setting on all three leak detectors and we'll see what happens there. Here we are a couple of minutes later. All of our gas leak detectors have since calmed down. They're ready to go again. This time we're going to do the test with all three of them set to their maximum possible sensitivity. However, before I get to that, I would like to bring up two important points that are worth considering. First, if you decide to make this test with your own explosive gas leak detector, be careful of doing so as you could end up poisoning or contaminating the sensor in your detector, which would render it useless probably at a very inopportune time, like when you really did need to test for the presence of an explosive gas of some kind or another. I would also like to make it known, and had intended to do this in the previous segment, that the gas output level control on this Weller soldering iron has been set to its most minimal level, so it's only emitting a small amount of butane gas. So here we go again, round number two. I'll go ahead and turn the gas on yet again. It's flowing out of the soldering iron right now, and we'll place it near the sensors and see who picks up on it. Well, as it happens, both the Klein and the Inficon picked up on it, but I have yet to hear any reaction out of the top test on its high sensitivity setting, which is definitely rather surprising. Now, the Inficon tends to automatically reset its level to zero 
which is why it's kind of wandering up and down right now. I'm not sure what to make of this result. I'm going to try restarting all three of the gas leak detectors to see if there's any difference. But I am a little troubled by this. All three detectors have now been restarted. Let's attempt the test again here. I'll turn the gas on from the soldering iron, which still has plenty in it. Okay, that time the top test was right on top of it, as was the Inficon, and the Klein Tools is not very far behind. So I'm not actually sure what happened there. Is it possible that the microcontroller in the top test could have crashed? I don't know. Now let's go ahead and try making a test for natural gas. Now I'm not actually going to make a natural gas leak take place. Not only would that be irresponsible and particularly dangerous, Owing to the fact that my life is a comedy, I would probably also find myself unable to get the leak stopped. I have all three leak detectors here powered up, set to their highest sensitivity, and as it happens, the regulator on the gas meter, that's the round disc on the left hand side that you might be able to see there, those have a little vent on the bottom, and every now and again in the course of that regulator's operation, that burps out a little bit of natural gas. This will also satisfy the methane component of the test, and believe me, I'm going to take the high road on that one because natural gas is largely composed of methane. So let's go ahead and try our Inficon first. We may not find anything here. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a hit there. Let's try the Klein tools. And indeed, we're getting a little bit of a hit on that. Now let's try the top test. So far, I'm not registering anything. I hope it hasn't failed again. I'll power cycle it and we'll run the test again. This is try number two on natural gas with the top test explosive gas leak detector. I've just restarted it. It's in the high sensitivity setting. I can actually smell a little bit of the methyl mercaptan odorant here in the natural gas. But I'm still getting absolutely no reading out of this thing. And I think in the interest of fairness, just in case this one might be a dud or has some other kind of problem, I'll go ahead and get the other one out that they sent me and we'll try it and see if it does any, more, any better. Folks, I have to admit, I've got some reservations about this particular product. I went ahead and prepared the second unit for use, and what I have discovered is that there is definitely a noticeable difference in performance between the two. The second one appears to be much more sensitive and certainly faster responding. I sat down and I thought about this a little bit after running a few more tests with the butane gas and discovering that on unit number one there on the right, the one that I started out with, the battery symbol was coming on occasionally. Now, some of you may be saying, oh, those Duracell batteries, you don't know that they're real, they probably aren't real, etc., etc., etc. I have no reason to believe they're not. They certainly look very real to me. Duracell does have a battery factory in China that people who manufacture there can buy their batteries from so as to include them more quickly. These batteries are date-coded 08 of 2022, that's August of 2022, with an expiration date of 08-2029. And I even went so far, when I saw the battery symbol come on, to change them out for new batteries. And I went ahead and took this little meter. I'll try to get it so you can see the numbers on it. I'm not sure what will work the best for that. Seems the backlight does. But this has 
if we set the range properly and cycle the backlight so it might actually stay on. This has a load tester built in and it says that all of these packed in Duracell batteries are still good. That one might be a little bit on the low side but not enough that I'd worry about it. I also intend to bring this up to the representative of Top Test that I have been communicating with to see what they happen to think. And if I can include it in this video, I certainly will. If I cannot, please watch the video description or I might even make a pinned comment for that purpose when I receive their response. It will also let me gauge how good their technical support happens to be in regard to things like this that you might find if you decide to purchase one of these. In any event, after changing the batteries, I did not notice a change in the performance of either explosive gas leak detector. And now let's go ahead and test for sensitivity with propane gas. And everybody alarmed almost instantly on that one. See how long it takes them to settle back down here. Okay, only the Klein tools and one of the top test detectors is still alarming. The two top test detectors are quiet again. And now the Klein tools is slowly winding down. Now since it happens that I don't have any sewer gas available, and I figure I ought to make that up to those of you in the viewing audience who are hoping to see these gas leak detectors tested with that substance, I have decided instead to see if any of these leak detectors, including the two from Top Test, are sensitive to acetylene. So we'll take my little air acetylene torch set here, and we'll just turn it on a little bit. And the answer is yes. Both of the top test gas leak detectors went off, as did the one from Klein Tools and the other from Inficon. It's time to get this video review wrapped up. Would I recommend that you purchase the top test PT210 combustible gas leak detector? I would say provisionally. It's certainly an inexpensive tool, very reasonably priced, something you could throw into your tool bag as a backup or just something to have around the house if you ever suspected that there was a leak of sewer or combustible gas. However, I would strongly recommend that before you use this tool, you test it with a known combustible gas of some type before you trust it from the behavior that I have seen. I had some further conversations with the representative at Top Test Tools inquiring about sensor life and if there would be any kind of indication when the sensor has failed. They said that the sensor life is rated at three years and the tool does not provide an indication of when the sensor has failed. So again, you may want to take the opportunity before you utilize it to test it with a known combustible gas of some type or another. I also asked if replacement sensors were available. They said they were not. For a tool that costs as little as this one does, that's definitely understandable. However, since some of you do not read the video description and won't know about this otherwise, I will say that we are going to go down that rabbit hole a little bit more deeply than I did in this video where I was just trying to give you an overview of the product and determine whether or not it was worth your hard-earned money. Suffice it to say, there are some things I've learned. There are also some things that I would very definitely like to show you about this product, but those will have to wait for another video. However, I will give you a teaser right here and now. There's your teaser, folks. As always, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I certainly hope that you have found it informative and useful. 
Likewise, if you have a constructive comment or a question and would like to ask it, please feel free to post down in the comments. And again, as always, thank you very much for watching.